Welcome to the Nono Giorgio and Rory cooking Italian for weight loss. Today we're doing everyone's favorite crusty bread. Let's look at the variety and how crunchy and crispy it is. Delicious. Hi, welcome to the Nono Giorgio and Rory cooking Italian for weight loss. Today we're going to do everybody's favorite bread. And we know, you know, on, when you're on a diet, bread, not very good, right? But a little bit of bread you have to have. And yesterday we made um, our uh, pasta con vongole. You need some bread with that to soak up that garlic sauce. Yeah, you know what I mean. <laughs> Gotta have that bread. This is so delicious and again, so simple. Anybody can make it and it's pretty quick. There's just a lot of waiting time. It's a, it's a crusty bread like you get in Europe, which we love. And it's so simple. It's flour. We're going to be using uh, bread flour today, but you can use regular flour. Salt, yeast, and water. That's it. Three ingredients. Yeah, mix them up and it makes a very sticky dough. So you're either going to want, when you work with it, you're either going to want to put a little water on your fingers, a little olive oil, or some flour. And, but that'll be tomorrow. Today we're just going to mix the three ingredients and um, put a little plastic wrap over these two containers and set it on the counter. You want to wait 12 to 18 hours. So it's better to be 18. So you, you have to decide to make this the day before you want to bake it. Tomorrow we'll come back and we'll actually bake it. Now we're going to make uh, one uh, in, uh, set of ingredients to go into a cast iron pot to be a round loaf. And the other one we're going to divide in half. We're going to make one baguette type uh, loaf and we're going to make a couple of rolls. You can make any of these three and we want to show you how easy it is to do that. You can also um, use all kinds of toppings which are wonderful. If you like cheese you can sprinkle cheese on, on one of them. We use olives, um, we use sun-dried tomatoes. Um, so you can actually put that in the bread if you want it or you can have it plain. Yep. And tomorrow we're planning on actually doing a, an olive loaf for the round loaf. So you'll see when we take it out, we'll cut a bunch of Kalamata olives in half and mix it in and Ooh. then just move the dough so they get mixed around. It's delicious. And bake it. The cast iron pots, you'll see in a minute, um, they create steam. And the baguette's going to go on a baguette form in the oven and it's going to have tin foil over it. And this it creates steam as well. And you cook them for 30 minutes to build steam and then you take the top off the cast iron pot, the tin foil off the uh, baguette, and you let them go until they brown the way you want them. They'll come out crusty and delicious. And beautifully browned. So you can brown them as much as you want or as little, depending on how brown you like your bread. All right, let's make the dough. All right. This is our cast iron pot. They're very, very heavy. Uh, you're going to put it in the oven with the lid on. So it has to have a handle that can take high uh, oven temperatures. And this is our baguette form. You can make two baguettes and one of these balls of dough that we're going to make, you can divide in half and make two. But today we're going to make one and then the other half is going to make rolls. Alright, so the first thing we need is we're going to take flour and we're going to put three cups of flour in each of our containers. And a knife works well to even out your, your flour. Okay, the next thing we're going to do is 
one and three quarters teaspoons of salt. And we're going to do a half a teaspoon of dry active yeast. And if a little bit more goes in, that's okay. You know, it's interesting to me that you don't have to soak the yeast for this recipe. Usually you have to put the yeast in, in warm water, right? But here you don't have to. Here you don't have to. But I do use warm water. Uh, you don't want to use hot water because you can kill the yeast. But you don't want cold water either because it takes a long time before the yeast becomes active. So I'm just mixing the yeast salt flour mixture. And next. So while we're waiting, I don't know if you noticed uh, George's um, apron, but that apron came from Tuscany. And um, I took a, a bike trip through Tuscany a couple of years ago and uh, did what they call an agro tour. And I just loved it. It was beautiful countryside, great exercise. And the apron was from a cooking class that we had at one of the uh, farms. This is all farm, old, old farms, and you eat the food they raise and uh, they cook. And it's absolutely fabulous. Okay, we're doing a cup and a half of warm water. And then we're going to take a spatula and we're just going to mix it. Now, all flour is different. So if you find when you do this that it's too liquidy, put a little more flour in. If you find it's not liquidy enough, it's not mixing, put a little more water in. I can smell the yeast working. Now we've mixed the same ingredients in both bowls. This one is mixing better than that one. So you can never tell. You, you, you either add some flour or you add some water. You really can't go wrong with this recipe. It's such an easy recipe. It works for you each time. People will take your bread and say, oh my God, you made such wonderful bread. So George has been asked for this recipe a hundred times and he's always willing to share it. People love it, anyone can make it. This is considered one of the no need breads. You don't have to knead it. Kneading can be difficult. You don't have to knead this, uh, but you do have to let it sit and rise for 18 hours. So once you get it that it's mixed properly, then we're gonna take some plastic wrap and we're going to cover it. You want to make sure it's really covered otherwise your dough will get crusty and bad. And we're just going to sit these on the counter and tomorrow in 18 hours we're going to bake it. Yes. Okay. Hi. Well it's been 18 hours and our dough has risen to almost the tops of these pots. We're going to take off the show you this. Now, this is very sticky dough. So what I do is I take a handful of dough and I get my hands in it and I move the dough around like this away from the sides and then I bring it out on a well-floured surface. It's very, very sticky dough. Now, you want to get some flour. The flour is going to make this more manageable. And this, is, this one we're going to put olives in. And we're just going to fold it and work them around so they get mixed in. If you just keep folding the sides up and over, you see the olive coming out, kind of like repair it there. So now I've got a dough that I can lift. And I'm going to set this aside, 
put a piece of uh, plastic wrap just so the dough doesn't get hard while we set up our other and then our next dough. When you do the Italian loaf or the baguettes, one of these dough recipes, which is three cups if you remember from yesterday, uh, you cut it in half and you can make two. Today we're going to cut it in half, we're going to make one baguette, and the other half we're going to make probably three to five rolls, really depends on the size of the rolls. So I'm going to cut the dough. The dough's gotten much, much easier to use. Now this one, I'm going to work it just to get the flour incorporated. And then this one, we're going to make into our baguette. Now, we had started our oven up at 450. Uh, our oven takes about a half hour, so allow in your plan uh, for basically a half hour to warm up and then work on your bread, which gives it an extra 10-15 minutes to really get the temperature right. Uh, then you need 30 minutes with the covers on and tin foil on the baguette, and then you need 15 to 20 minutes without covers. And the rolls take 30 to 35. We're going to be putting them on the top shelf, so they may take a little less. These pots are incredibly hot, so be careful. This is a heavy cast iron pot. This is a baguette maker. We're going to take the lid off. You need one where the lid and the handles on the lid can go in the oven up to 500 degrees. Okay, so now we're going to take our baguette and just put it on there. Cover it with a piece piece of tin foil. Then we're going to take our full loaf with the olives in it and we're going to form a ball and just drop it into the pot. Now the pot, um, I remember you told me George, doesn't have any um, grease in it. It doesn't have any oil. Yeah, that's, right. it, that's important. You don't want to grease it. it. The pot is so hot that the bread's not going to stick to it. So I guess when you put it in the oven, it immediately starts cooking and then doesn't stick, correct? That's correct. Okay. Uh, now what I'm going to do is take this last half loaf and I'm going to try to divide them into equals. So there's half and maybe half again. So we'll probably get like four nice size rolls. And we're going to take this. Now a little trick, you want, you want enough flour so you can do it without it sticking. A little trick is to push the sides toward the, the bottom middle. Pull the dough around and tuck it in with your fingers. Pull it around, tuck it in. What this does is it gives you a nice top. And we're going to put those rolls on a cookie sheet. Uh, we put uh, parchment paper on the cookie sheet. So as I said in another um, video we we you know we've become very fond of parchment paper uh, it cooks well and it cleans up well so we use it quite a bit now and what I had forgotten to do this time um, that you can do is on the breads um, you can cut a little slit in the bread the top of the bread and it kind of opens it up like a professional loaf of bread so we can do the same thing on the um, on the rolls. On the rolls, yeah. just a little slit. And then we put some 
sesame, which I love. So you notice, you know, we don't color inside the lines. <laughs> our rolls and our breads are homemade, so they look homemade. They're not perfectly round or perfectly straight or anything like that, but they taste delicious. Okay, so we're going to set a timer. 30 minutes? Some, yep. Okay. Uh, then we're going to take the lid off the uh, cast iron and we're going to take the tin foil off the baguette and put them back in for 15 to 20 minutes to brown. And we're going to check the rolls at the 30 minute point to see if they're, um, they need to come out or get a little bit more because they're up on that top shelf. Okay. It's been 30 minutes, so we're going to take the lid off the pot, we're going to take the tin foil off the baguettes, and we're going to check on the rolls. I'm gonna... Look how beautiful they look already, and they're not quite browned. And there's our little rolls. Maybe a little bit? With the sesame seeds, yeah. Think? I think they could brown a little bit longer. They still look a little white. All right, white. so we need 15 to 20, but I'm going to do five for the rolls. And then we'll um, do the rest for the others, and we'll be back to take them out of the oven and put them on our racks. So here's the finished product, which always turns out beautiful. I mean, does that not look like a professional baker in Italy did it? And then we have funny things like this. So somehow we created a little mushroom bun. <laughs> the other ones are round. And our baguette is absolutely perfect. It's a little brown on the bottom, but it really looks like it came out of an artisanal, artisanal <laughs> oven, doesn't it? So we're letting these cool, and then we're going to um, make some avocado toast and we're going to tell you about the butter we use which we just love and it's actually vegan but it tastes to me it tastes exactly like real butter so uh, we'll see you in a little bit okay the, the dough recipe here makes one of these big round loaves two of the baguette or Italian loaf and since we only used a half and got four you would get eight this size rolls um, out of one recipe. So you can judge what you need um, uh, as you're baking. So the bread is cooled now. It's still warm, but you can touch it. I'm going to take our little mushroom roll and cut it right in half. Listen to the crunch. <laughs> I can't wait. Soft inside. And, and very crunchy on the outside. It has big holes in it, air holes, which make it delicious. It's a beautiful, beautiful, sunny Sunday morning in Clearwater. And we've got this bounty. And we're very grateful because it almost makes things feel normal. I'm going to do the Italian loaf or baguette, whatever you want to call it. If it was a little skinnier, it would be a baguette. This is an Italian loaf, like you'd see a lot in Italy. If you cut it on an angle, you get longer pieces. And uh, you can do bruschetta with this. Uh, we're going to put a little piece of cheese on it. You can, of course, do butter, traditional American way. So in Europe, um, very often a snack or lunch is a piece of bread like this and a piece of cheese, uh, maybe if you're not vegetarian, a piece of ham, but to me, I could just have that for a meal, the bread and the cheese, and um, here we have uh, an interesting product called Earth Balance, which is uh, uh, butter made out of vegetables. And uh, it's actually a vegetable oil blend with safflower and flax and olive oil. And it tastes wonderful. To me, it tastes like real butter, but it's not, it doesn't have the cholesterol and the fat that real butter has. 
and it's a vegan product for you vegans out there. We also cut up some slices of avocado, and on this big bread we're going to do avocado toast, where we spread the avocado out with a little salt. Now this one, uh, be careful, because when you start cutting, the knife can slip. I like to cut right down the center, and then I lift the bread up and I cut slices this way. Look at the olives in that. They are so good. Let's have a taste. Okay, here you want to do the avocado. And I'm going to put a little bit of this um, uh, butter on mine. What a feast. I wish you could join us, but sometime you will, or you have. Listen to the crunch, soft and dense inside, crusty on the outside. This is delicious bread, and you can make the three varieties together, separate, as much as you want. We have two of those cast iron pots, so I can make two big round loaves at a time. And it couldn't be simpler. I mean, three ingredients, that's all this bread takes. Your kids could do this except for the oven part. Yeah. They could make the dough, that's how easy it is. You know, you just mix the, the flour, the water, the yeast, and the salt together. Perfect. Can't, it, you won't go wrong. One last tip. Uh, we will, when we're done enjoying this, we will cut this bread up uh, into pieces will make sure they're completely cool, put them in plastic bags, make sure they're zip closed tight, and then put all the bags in another plastic bag and, and uh, twist that up and put it in our freezer. If you freeze them on the day you bake them, they'll come out tasting the same. Take them out, put them in your toaster, and you'll have crunchy uh, bread and delicious taste again. You can even put it back in the oven if you want to Absolutely. take the time and wait. But this was something I learned from George because I never thought to put bread in the freezer. And so I would buy a loaf, I would eat a little bit, and then the rest would go, go bad. It would get really hard and inedible. So I'm amazed at how good it tastes when it comes out of the freezer and in the toaster. It tastes fresh again. So that's, that's a really good tip. <laughs> okay, ciao and arrivederci. Bye, thank you for watching. Have a wonderful day. We hope you have enjoyed our channel. If you have, please hit the subscribe button below and the bell next to it so you get notified of new videos when they come out.